Literally season one, if you had to describe it in one sentence, it was hot, nasty, stinky, dirty, and bloody. Technically, that's not a sentence. I think those are the five words that Kripke used to sell the show. It was those five words and then superheroes. Hey, GQ, I'm Chase Crawford. I play the deep on The Boys. Hi, I'm Karen Fukuhara. I play Kimiko. I'm Anthony Starr. I play Homelander. Hey, I'm Jensen Ackles. I play Soldier Boy. I'm Laz Alonzo. I play Mother's Milk on Amazon Prime series The Boys. These are some of our biggest moments. You hear? I thought it was hilarious because we didn't see your part of the whale. Right. So we just shot ours and then... No, uh, right, I couldn't even see, yeah, they're like, just get up on the whale and just, okay, the boat's coming, you know, and it was in the blowhole. Yeah. Yeah. We had a blast shooting that whole sequence. I think it was three, four days? It was. You guys yeah. were bloody, I mean, inside the guts of it, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, lot, yeah, right? but yeah. even before the uh, blood and guts, speed, speed of boat. the boat, yeah. I mean, Carl was driving that boat like a madman, and he was <laughs> enjoying it. Yeah. The director of that episode is an ex-stuntman. Steve. Steve, Steve. Yeah. yes, Steve. yes, yeah. Steve. So he literally had a helicopter that he was in. And so we were shooting like Miami Vice shots the whole day we spent on the lake from like early that morning to evening. Carl drove the boat and then Steve's up on a helicopter just like taking like sweeping shots all over. They're, they're like right in front of us. The helicopter's going backwards and he's like zooming over our heads and you know, we're like, you know, crocking in tubs. And Jack was sitting in the very front of the boat. We had a safe word. Yeah. I, I, do you Just remember what this? It was Carl. Carl, 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 Carl. Carl. You had to say Carl, 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 Carl three times. Go! Oh, Jack. That's not a bad safe word. Jack's like screaming, Carl, Carl, Carl. But the thing is, is he's in front of us, so we can't hear because he's screaming forward, and we're behind him. We got the motor going. Like everybody's like into it, and then when we stop, Jack turns around and looks like he has no blood in his face. Yeah, blue. He's blue. blue. Lips are blue, tongue is blue, everything on him is blue. Except his butt, which is bright red. Bright red. Like yeah. oh, he got bright red ass. Oh. And got yeah, paddled. Jack didn't make it to the end of that day. They had to come get him out. We had to send a boat out to come get him. Oh, Actually, the boat oh, yeah. sank. He was the oh yeah, and the then the boat sank. sank. Oh, the boat the sank. Yeah, yeah. Our boat we were going to go wow. one more take, one more take, and then they said, oh, there's a hole in the boat. And well, we were the one that told them there was a, a <laughs> yeah, hole. Yeah, it was yeah. coming in through the yeah, yeah. through the motor. It was a nutty day. It was yeah. a nutty day. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, they're sure. supposed to float. Yeah. Sure. If it's sinking, something's wrong. Whoa, 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 hey, look, you're gorgeous. I'm not, I'm not talking about sex. Just a little bit of pole smoking. It's just a question of how bad you want to be in the seven. After I was cast, you know, they're like, okay, we want to do this scene from the comics and this specific shot. <laughs> we had a long time to rehearse and talk about it and, and all the nuances of it and stuff like that. What? <laughs> I mean, you said you had a crush on me. I figured that, you know. He sees nothing wrong with it. It's just something he's entitled to, almost like as fucked up as it is. Like, oh, this is what we do to the, to the rookies or whatever. Like, he's almost surprised when it doesn't work out the way, you know, it's sort of planned, which is really fucked up. No, Please. what? So they could tell the world that we left the rest of them to fucking die? Come on! You stay the fuck back or I'll laser you, goddammit! I'll laser every fucking one of you! Let's go! The whole plane, the sequence was filmed in, obviously, in a, in a plane. There's a, you can rent film-worthy planes, which are basically gutted except for the seats, and you can move around in them and get cameras in there. And it was a funny day because Dom, she was just traumatized the entire day. And I, I just found the whole thing hysterically funny, watching these stunt guys get sucked out of plane doors. And it's very on brand. It was, yeah, it was like, I, I, we had such a different experience because I was just, I, I've always found the dark stuff in this show laced with comedy which I think right. is that sweet spot that, we, that the show lives in, where, you know, it's, it's accessible because there's always this humor. Are you going to save us? Oh, sweetheart, of course I'm going to save you. You betcha. But poor old Dom had to um, go through that day, like, you know, welling up and getting emotional. And so we had very different experiences, but it was, a, it was definitely a fun day at work. Of course, the cherry on top was watching um, Chase have a dolphin fly through the windscreen at the end of the day. It's great. It all dovetailed together lovely. 
big stop to the Atlantic Ocean. That's right. That's right. I was shooting the dolphin scene in, in a big warehouse and they're, you know, they're shaking the thing and spritzing the dolphin down and Anthony's in like the massive airplane right. head across the way. We were shooting those scenes on the same day. It was just a very harrowing, intense, you know, action sequence in me like, shut the fuck up. If I just touch it, will you shut up? <laughs> It was so funny. It was really funny. Acting with that prosthetic dolphin. But you saw it was the same day, it was right? So right? good. I yeah, just, was, I just walked great. over and just sat watching and laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're the, like Greenpeace's worst nightmare. You like you take out dolphins. Season two, it's a whale. It's like what next? Manatee? The hits keep coming. Really, season one was probably the dirtiest season for the boys. Any dungeness, hot, no AC, dirty, like we chased her through real subway tunnels. The reason why we were able to use the subway was because we had to use the abandoned tracks two stories under the regular tracks, and there were no elevators, and we had to shoot overnights when the subway was closed. There were yes. rats. There were, there, mice. Were rats. there were mice and rats. On the trains. Yeah, on the trains, and yep. then I had to be barefoot. You had to be barefoot, because yeah. your fake feet, she, they gave <laughs> her fake prosthetic feet that didn't work. They never work, no. And she had, yeah, it was nuts. It was, it gross, was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I guess she's, uh, Kimiko's had a glow up since then. Yeah. Yes, luckily. I said, lay back. Ah. Ow! Oh my God! Oh. So the day after he shot that scene, I remember going in the makeup trailer and his gills, his whole chest plate and gills were laying in the makeup trailer and my dumb ass decided to touch the gills. They're beautiful, it man. And it moved. It moved. They're beautiful. I literally ended up on the other side of the makeup trailer and my hand was dripping white, like clear goo. It was very lubricated. Mystery goop. Very slippery. And the gills moved by them. They were like, yeah, they, they moved on their own. Yeah, they're truly really disgusting. Oh. And you'll oh. never forget it. They made like a, a replica of my chest. So in season one, when I did he pass his comeuppance, she can, you know. Are you like getting your fucking gills finger? A rep of my chest is on my own chest, and they're like pumping hand pumps to make the move, and it was it was a lot that day. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Eagle. Hey. In here, open up. Bro, we gotta talk. Kripke was actually like, we're gonna get Helen Mirren to voice the gills. You know, he was Helen Mirren. shooting for the moon. Helen Mirren, can you imagine Helen Mirren? He was joking, but yeah. I've gotta go to, I've gotta go and <laughs> yeah, go lay down Anthony some Hopkins, tracks. Maybe, but no, yeah, you think no, he's, he's joking until he's not, though. Yeah, the milk thing has really taken on a life of its own. It started with Eric, he wrote it into the, the first scene when I was, I found some leftover Stillwell juice in the freezer. <laughs> Mummy juice, <laughs> and laser it warm and then Colby interrupts. She walks in and, and it was like one of those moments where I was like, oh, we just gotta go for it and be like, mm -hmm. As soon as we were doing it, it, it was like, oh fuck, we gotta, we gotta keep this going. So I emailed Crip, buddy, that was so much fun. It was so funny. I think we gotta do more. And he was like, I'm way ahead of you, man. I've seen the dailies and it, you get ready to drink milk. I was like, okay, <laughs> yep. Get ready uh, to the, drink milk. Yeah, yeah, the dairy marketing board loves it. <laughs> it just became this little motif and it's really demented, which actually in a weird way opened a lot of doors into the character and into how weird we could go. And then we've really exploited that entirely in season three. Season three, it's, it doesn't not factor in. I thought it was really cool that we 
went through her backstory in season two, and I had the best time working with Abraham, who plays Kenji. There was sort of this uh, chemistry uh, because we had this friendship offset. Isn't that your own language as well? What yeah. Do, what do you yeah, call yeah. it again? We call it KSL. KSL. No. So Amazing. instead of ASL, it's KSL. Kimiko sign language. And yeah. it's 100% only spoken by Karen Fukuhara. It's 100% gibberish. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we have a dictionary, so it's, uh, you know. You do? Yeah, yeah, we do. You should start selling it. Maybe. You can make a quick 20 bucks, mate. Don't tell Amazon. <laughs> 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 oh. Those were some hard scenes to shoot. I think the um, stunt coordinators on the show are amazing and they allow for a lot of rehearsal time. So it's not just, you know, you show up the day before and then you learn it. Especially for season three, um, John was all about prep. For each of the fights, I had maybe sometimes a month to go in and learn it all and get it in my muscle memory. It's how you make a safe set, so. Dad, please. Please don't make me jump. You called me dad. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't actually push a child off a roof, let's be clear. Um, because I actually did get some messages on Twitter going, Oh my God, what's wrong with you? You pushed him off. The kids, he's, a, he's an awesome little kid, so he's great. He, he's fun. And then we did it actually on a, it was about two foot high, just threw him off a, off the edge of a two-foot thing into a stump, man. I, I can't fly, I'll just fall right off hey, of here. Hey, 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 buddy, you're gonna love it. I promise. Nothing like you, I, I can't fly. You can. you can, I promise you can. It didn't really translate what it was gonna look like. It <laughs> didn't, when we were doing it, because most of the things I do, it's always, there's never much practical. It's like lasering the plane, it's like just green around you with a couple of tennis balls. So then I see it, and, oh, that looks great. And that was the case with this. It didn't really, it didn't compute. So it was just like, all right, we've done that. Can I go and have a lunch now? Yep. And then I saw it when it was finally done and I just burst out laughing. And the thing that really made it for me was his little squeal as he comes, as he flies off. <laughs> and that little, ah, comes out. And I, I, oh God, I was crying laughing at that. I thought it was hysterical. It's also the casualness in which Homelander is like, eh. Right. Like, uh, and the, dis the disappointment after that. Uh. Uh. <laughs> so it's not a great parent. Stormfront was a racist, cold-hearted bitch. <laughs> so it felt good that Kimiko got to uh, get a little bit of revenge at the end, and it was even better that it was not just Kimiko, but with all the other girls as well. Yeah, we had a really great time shooting that action sequence. I would not say the same for Aya. She had, a, she had a hard time. It kind of tied it all together. Full circle moment for Kimiko, at least. And it was real hand-to-hand -hand combat, which I loved. Uh, not all superpowers, and so um, it was fun to do. That whole shoot was really, really cold, though. It was starting to, I think it was November in Toronto, and we were still wearing our, I guess, summer clothing, but we had to continuously shoot, so it was very, very cold. Um, we remember like wearing all the Canada Goose in between takes and everything and warming up, yeah. Instagram loved it. <laughs> it was Laz's first favorite day. It. Yeah, favorite day. Uh, I noticed that uh, some of my fellow cast members were taking uh, sneaky shots unbeknownst to me while I was rehearsing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We had to. You thought Carl was pulling a prank on you. Yes. Um, and he, he was explaining to Laz what happens in the script and um, he didn't believe it. He comes up to everyone. He came up to me and he was like, Karen, is he fucking with me? Like, is it actually happening? I was like, Laz, have you read that? It, it's in there. It wasn't in the first draft. draft. In the first draft, my character just sees him on the CCTV damn. screen and he just goes, oh man, brother got a love sausage. That's it. God damn. Brother's got a love sausage. And then by like draft 11, it's strangling me. <laughs> and so then I go to Karen, who's one of my confidants on set, and she's like, yeah, 
it's really happening. And I'm like, oh, you too? You're in on it with him? <laughs> Even like the makeup girls, everybody's like laughing and like giggling. And I'm like, you guys, that's really happening? They're like, you might want to ask for a new copy of the script. <laughs> I go to my trailer and I'm like, Gah! you know? It was a crazy week. We shot that at a real abandoned mental hospital in this area called London, which was about two, three hours away. So we had to sleep out there and live out there for, for about a week. That's all we did was, you know, 13 hours a day, we were in this abandoned mental facility that certain parts of it were quote unquote haunted, according to certain people. By the time we got to that, that shot, we were already indoctrinated, like we were there. So we were in the zone and we just went for it. Was that? That's his fucking dick. Don't be so close-minded. Do you guys ever sit when we're doing things like this and, and listen and then think, well, I could have done anything else with my life <laughs> than talk about stuff like that. I could have been a lawyer. Could have done anything. I was just sitting there then listening to that story going, wow, that's insane what we're doing. <laughs> we're sitting here talking about a man wrestling a prosthetic penis. I love it. <laughs> love it. Everyone needs a day job, right?